Hi, fans of high quality entertainment. I am with Matt from Pop Goes the 60s, uh, YouTube, one of my favorite YouTube channels I followed for, I think, almost from the beginning. You, you started in September of 2019. Um, that is correct. I'll, I'll just read this little thing that I stole from your channel. Mm. Pop Goes the 60s is dedicated to reviewing and presenting 60s music, both rare and popular, praised and scorned, underappreciated and underrated. This channel will offer regular commentary on the Beatles, I've heard of them, as well as other groups, both acclaimed and obscure, album reviews, band histories, vinyl discographies, albums that never were, and song samples will all be part of a larger focus. And your latest series is on the Beach Boys history, and I've watched all four Freaky Friends, the album began in earnest in early 1966. Now, in addition to adding Tony Asher as lyricist, Brian Wilson also employed a much larger pool of studio musicians to capture the sound to match the grandeur of the lyrics. And some of the tracks have been recorded while the group was, was touring in Japan. When the band heard these new recordings, there was some genuine concern so over many, them. And like in total, is the series going to be? Well, I've got six planned, yeah. uh, so it should take us the next series. The part five will be post smiles, roughly smiley smile through like surfs up, I think. Yeah. And then after that, I'm going to deal a little bit with just the, I guess the um, endless summer period to through the probably the '90s, mm -hmm. which is more kind of Brian Wilson focused in his kind of. Uh, in and out of the band and his mental troubles, because that's very interesting. Yeah. You know, I really think the Beach Boys didn't, I mean, some people may disagree, but you know, after about 72, 73, they became more of a nostalgia act and they had some good stuff here and there, but I, I'm not gonna focus on the music too much in the 70s and the 80s, but mm -hmm. still a fascinating story, lots of drama. Yeah. And, you know, I've always liked the Beach Boys and I've always really liked Pet Sounds, but it wasn't until recently that listening to Pet Sounds, it finally hit me, like it does for other people, what a great album it is. Like, I, you know, like the whole album, it, just one night, it just got to me. Like, yeah, it's for a lot of people, it's an acquired taste. Yeah. I've always liked the album, yeah. and I never was, some people I would say are more gaga for it. I, I wouldn't say that I'm quite there. It's not. I enjoy it and I appreciate the production value and the melodies and things and what uh, they were doing. Yeah. And uh, I really started when I was a teenager and I started to deal with the post good vibration beach boys. I had a buddy that had a big album collection. He had way more than I had. And he loaned me all the late sixties beach boys albums. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into that. I was very impressed with some of that yeah. stuff. And it's not very well known at all, but it's yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Dennis Wilson, quite a talent himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I'd like, like to ask, what are your first memories of music? And, you know, and you're kind of attached, I guess, you know, you love the sixties. And so just tell me your story of, of that. Well, I had a fascination playing records as a little kid. So by the age I of two, I was playing records and I, wow. I really liked record players and I had kind of a fascination with just 45 singles and yeah. I liked the labels too. Yeah. Eventually I became a designer so I can see now why I like those cool. labels and when they'd spin yeah. around. Yeah. So I, I was, my mom and dad had records laying around and my mom had some Roy Orbison stuff and maybe some Four Seasons. My dad had more like Everly Brothers and some Elvis and, um, just, you know, that early rock and roll period. So I had all that stuff to listen to. And when I moved to the house that I grew up in, I had a neighbor who was my age, but he had seven older brothers and sisters. They had tons of records. So everything I had was pretty much from the 60s. So that's what I was immersed in. You know, in the 70s were going on behind me. So that also, I was immersed in that as well. Yeah. But I didn't really have those, those records at all. Yeah. And so when you started up your YouTube channel, like, I, I know I just saw your very first video today. It was on a turntable, but hmm. what was your first idea of starting the YouTube channel? Like, 
it, is it has it turned out the way you expected it to or yeah pretty much i had started i started in yeah i think the first video went live in december of 19 and i was i had decided a year before i think that i was going to do the channel but i had to wait to get a new computer so mm -hmm. i could really crank the video yeah and so i was I got my logo together. And I started getting some topics. Well, what am I going to do here? You know, what kind of stuff? And I realized that it looked like it was going to be a December start. So that's when I started with about four different Christmas videos and just a, a mix of different 60s groups that recorded Christmas songs or Christmas albums. Yeah. And then um, my wife, Heather, who was not my wife at the time, I had bought, I would take her record shopping here and there we go to like the dollar bins and go through stuff and one record that she bought that we we played a lot was P a peter and gordon album of all things it was um which one was it um woman mm -hmm. and it's it's a really good album so that got me thinking well i'm gonna we were talking about it one night and i was kind of boring her to death with my analysis of peter and gordon <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, i said well maybe this should be my first band video which i it was so yeah, that's cool. just kind of how i started then i i got you know i started doing some Beatles stuff right away which was something i really wanted to do yeah um so what what bands so so, so you're kind of it's not like you're just stuck on the 60s though right like you could I'm pretty stuck in the '60s, but yes, um, yes. yeah. So yeah. the because of I, the name, <laughs> yeah. Some of the yeah. the topics do spill into the '70s and later, but it the, yeah. Well, the, well, you're talking about the Be Beach Boys in the '90s too, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't help but talk about yeah. Smile being officially released in the '90s or yeah. early, early 2000s or whenever that was. Yeah. So that, but I there, I'm tempted to do some '70s bands, I suppose. But I, I'm gonna, I've got a long list of '60s bands to do. Yeah, and I, I didn't. I don't want to get people's hopes up that I'm going to be doing a lot of '70s stuff. But I, I think there's a few artists, probably ten or a dozen, that I would take the time to do some because they're really special to me. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the day you might do uh, videos on the Lemon Pipers. Yes, Strawberry Alarm Clock, a favorite um, of mine. The Buckinghams, who I mm -hmm. feel are a very underrated uh, '60s band. Well, you know, I had a post-it when I before I started the channel. I said these are the first six bands I want to do, and Strawberry Alarm Clock was on that list of six, yeah. and I haven't done them yet. But I, I will. I'm gonna. Yeah, that's cool. Because there, that's a group I, I really have always liked, and I mm -hmm. had their albums at a very early age, and um, it, it's one of those bands where they, they just have consistent albums. There's not a there's not a masterpiece in there, but consistently good stuff. And then Ed King was in the band, and he yeah. Went on to be with uh, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. And his playing in the alarm clock is very good. I mean, he yeah. was like 17 when that band started, I think. Yeah. Maybe 18. Yeah. So it's yeah. amazing how good he was even at that age. Yeah. So on your, what I've been wondering is on your channel, sometimes you play little clips of music. Now, how, how do you get away with the copyright crap that YouTube you just play little like five second clips? Or... Yeah, sometimes I don't get away with it. Yeah. YouTube, as you know, is, I don't know if it's getting worse or better, but the way it's structured is that even if you're doing something that falls within fair use, like yeah. you and I do, it's, the owner can claim it. So instead of, this is what they don't really have a good handle on, you know, they're stopping the promotion, the free promotion of their, their catalog. Yeah, I, I don't understand if, that. It's like if you pay, let's say you were to pay, play 30 seconds of a yeah. Beatles song, that would yeah. probably would get you probably canceled or something. Yeah. Or uh, not canceled, but a copyright strike, perhaps. So. Somebody's car alarm. Let's uh, wait for that oh, to go. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't understand why. I understand, you know, not using a band's music in a video, but 30 seconds, you're promoting them, right? Like... What are you? What is anybody going to get out of a thirty-second clip? Yeah, generally people want to listen to the whole song, you know. So yeah. you would think yeah. that, well, hey, if you give them a, a good taste of the song, they may go out and buy it. And, and then all everybody can just go to Spotify and listen to it anyway, right? So that's true. I mean, yeah, it's really kind of screwed up, and some bands take it to an extreme. I mean, you can't yeah. even mention some songs. The Eagles. Or something. Yeah. 
It's really weird. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to change, but the bands apparently will just become forgotten. Yeah. So I, I was looking at some of the videos you've done in the past, besides the Beach Boys history. Lots of uh, videos on the Beatles, solo Beatles, mm -hmm. the Birds, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Another band I feel is kind of hasn't really gotten their due. And, you know, you did a really good video on them. Cream, The Association, The Yardbirds, Jefferson Airplane, The Rascals. And I really enjoyed your interview with uh, Felix Cal Cavallari. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I understand you have a book out that came out earlier this year. Yeah, I got a book I call uh, A Memoir of a Rascal. From Pelham and to the Hall of Fame. Yes. Quite a ways from Pelham to the Rock and Hall of Fame. And you're you're part of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, too, and quite a, so, some others as well. Yeah, you know, it's uh, been a long career, and and and, and I'm happy to say, you know, I, 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 I got involved with a lot of these Hall of Fames, and they're interesting, they're fun, and, you know, they... Yeah, you know, kind of a select group, especially songwriters. I'm really, I'm really, really happy with that one. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, so, what? How do you handle? Or maybe you don't. Maybe you don't get any negative comments. But I, I had another uh, YouTuber message me today. One of his videos was doing really well, and he said, "Oh, the trolls are, you know." <laughs> because you're getting the views of course you're going to get the negative comments and mm. i'm just curious how you d deal with that kind of thing well i was welcomed to, into the youtube world uh <laughs> just like everybody else and the first I would say a year and a half. It was pretty bad. I mean, you'd get, it was almost like um, they weren't interested in the subject as much. They just wanted to, for lack of a better word, welcome you in. It was just their thing. That's what they do. They're like, it's kind of like almost a fetish, you know, yeah. the way they approach this. Then there was a, a segment of people that didn't like what I was saying, didn't agree with what I, what I said, or yeah. typically my videos are, you know, I, I question narratives and I bust some narratives and myths and things like that. And some people just act emotionally and they can't handle it. Yeah. yeah. And typically, although I leave all those comments in there, although yeah. I would say the last two years, it's really, a lot of that's gone away. I think I've just curated a different following and people kind of know what it is I'm doing and and I encourage people, you know, I, I've got opinions that are, I, I try to back them up with factual things I'm based on some wild emotion. And so long as people, some people can discuss, you know, but as you know, Larry, I mean, you, you know, I've, I've watched you for many years and you know some people really are hard on you and they're just they're just they're just mean some people are just mean and you know I, i'm gonna call the clown they're trying to make me cry man <laughs> a lot of that stuff is um i call it in its in a certain way a lot of it i might just ignore yeah yeah it's, Handle the, you're, you're breaking up a bit here. I'll, I'll edit this out a bit, but some, just letting you know. Some people no, will clip them. Okay. Yeah, some people just uh, leave these annoying remarks or they try to get me on a point or something, and I yeah. can usually handle them pretty yeah. well. So the, the thing is, you could argue forever, right? Like somebody, you know, you, you reply back, they reply back, and it can continue forever it's like and i don't want to argue about music i just want to enjoy it right yeah and some people like to argue about things they didn't even say you know it's yeah, the yeah. thing that i don't like is when they they misquote me or they say i said something that i didn't say that's <laughs> not, yeah. if you were listening you are at a point i didn't even make you know so yeah. you, you don't spend i don't spend too much time on those people but you do get it but I, I've been, like I said, I've been curating a pretty good following, and it's gushing, and that it really helps me because I don't, you know, I'm 
even if I do a six part piece on the Beach Boys, there's all kinds of things I leave out. I even, you know, I'll get a couple things wrong here and there. Mm-hmm. So I try to correct the record and, you know, it's, um, uh, it's kind of a team effort. Yeah. Um, so do you have any interest in the new Rolling Stones album? I've been hearing good things about it. Yeah. I've not heard a lot of it yet. Yeah. Um, I know McCartney's on it. That I'm, I haven't heard that yet, but I want to. Yeah. I'm anxious to hear that. You know, they sound good. I, I saw them in 2015 live, and I was impressed with their show. I was yeah. really impressed. Yeah. And um, the guitar playing and everything was just real top notch. So yeah, the, to me, I guess this is probably their last hurrah. I would think. Mm-hmm. But um, if they can go out on on top like this with a, with a good record out, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so what, after the beach boys, what, what ideas do you have coming up for the next my few mind, months? And my mind's you a, must have a big list. <laughs> yeah, I've got a big list and this <laughs> beach boys thing that I want to have done in August and it's going to go into December here, but yeah. probably, uh, or at least November, but yeah, my list, I'm going to get back to some more, uh, short forms groups that will only take me one I started doing some uh, Beatles re- album reviews. Uh, that has gone over pretty well that originally, but it's kind of working, and uh, it's 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 kind of a way for me to. Talk about I don't to the Beatles much anymore, at least not in the same way. And I'm a little bit sad because of that because I'm so busy trying to make content. I don't actually sit and relax and listen. Yeah, but uh, I've got. I, t- I typically listen to a lot of uh, the requests that get made. And, you know, when something gets requested like a dozen times, okay, that one, maybe I should move that one up the list a little bit. Yeah. So I've got uh, another, probably another San Francisco band coming and an LA band coming. I won't give it away right now because I haven't actually started them. <laughs> but uh, a couple a couple really highly touted bands that could really use a good retrospective. I've got some '60s bands here. Um, mm-hmm. Just, I, I just, I'd love your, you know, just a short opinion of each of them if you mm-hmm. have any interest in them. Procol Harum, oh, yeah. second album. Yeah, I, I Procol Harum is a group that I've slowly got over the years. They've got a few tracks that are just killer tracks. Yeah, Long tracks. From, you know the song "Long Gone Geek." Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a fan of Procol Harum. Yeah. The monkey. Have you done any videos on the monkey? I think you have. Have you? Uh, the monkeys. Are, I actually just brought out some monkeys material about a week or two ago. Uh, I forget why I brought it out. It wasn't really to read them at all, but I do a monkeys series. So that would be uh, like what I call the biggies. Like, yeah. Yeah. One would be another. The Kinks would probably be a biggie. The the Who, you know, some of those bands that will take a longer time to do. So the Monkeys will probably be next on my list of the biggies to do. So the so the Kinks, mm-hmm. the Moody Blues. I've really gotten in, into them in the last. Like I've always really respected them and liked them, but just in the past year, I've listened to all of their you know '60s albums, and yeah, I just think they're amazing. Yeah. And then Jefferson Airplane, mm-hmm. which of course you've covered. There's Canned Heat, Matt. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, like I said, the Buckinghams. And uh, that's fan as well. Three Dog Night, although they mm-hmm. went into the 70s, of course. And Frank Zappa. It'll be a tough one for me to do. I may yeah. do him at some point. It won't be soon, but focusing mostly on the 60s, because, you know, his 70s stuff, he got. He he went down a different path. It, yeah, not like the '60s stuff. And he was really, he was a pioneer of sorts with a scene. And uh, Brian Wilson was doing stuff that was orchestral and things. So it's really interesting. I'm not a huge as of a fan of his music. You're offended by his humor. <laughs> no, I'm not offended. I'm just uh, it's kind of um, his humor to me is a little bit of. He made a career of it. 
and I you get I get okay, I get it, Frank. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so th then there's the music. Well, yeah. some of the music is very good. Some of it I I don't care for. I do like jazz. So some of the stuff I I've gotten into. Yeah. Um, but I've gotten into a little bit of trouble. Uh, there's a there's actually a new guitarist, our greatest guitar players, and I'm not a big fan of his guitar playing. Mm critical guitar playing so if you want that's the those are the kind of people you might uh, ruffle some feathers there yeah uh, but yeah so he's but he's got well, his contribution is so much bigger than just music it's bigger than just composition and it's bigger than just his observational humor you know so, and uh so what do you think the big thing is that's happening with the beatles for tomorrow yeah, I just saw that today. I'd actually forgotten about that new song, <laughs> to be honest. I, mean, I wasn't really that excited about it to begin with. Yeah, because neither am I, actually. But, yeah. Boy, it's... I have to deal with a lot of fans that watch my channel that are excited about it, so I don't want their parade. But, I mean, there's really nothing more for the Beatles to release as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's... A lot of us could probably piece together some songs and make some interesting outfakes out, you know, of stuff that they've already started, never finished. This takes that beyond that. This um, the, the software that I, I got a feel that they've got something kind of cool here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be such a big splash, yeah. you know, something better than I'm expecting. I know that the YouTube world that I that I live in here is going to go bonkers. And so I'll be point talking about it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I hope uh, everybody checks out Matt's channel that hasn't, or, you know, hasn't yet. You have uh, almost 60,000 subscribers. Congratulations. You have more subscribers than I do. I shouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> Well, I'll have to send some viewers okay. your way, Larry. I'll yeah, yeah, thank you. You should be interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so thanks for the chat, Matt. And uh, I'll talk to you again sometime. Yeah, this was good. It's been a while, hasn't it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Take care.